How's it going everyone? This is my Lang. Welcome back to my channel where before I start the extensive rise in coverage from next week onwards, I'm doing something that I wanted to do for some time, but it kind of took a backseat to other projects as usual. And that is answer why you'd want to crossfire a RX 480 with an RX 470. Mm-hmm. First let's see why you do this. Back when Polaris launched, one big reason to go crossfire on something that is not officially supported by AMD by the way, was availability. You were more likely to find an RX 470 in stock than an RX 480. Obviously this doesn't apply anymore so the sole reason you should answer that crossfire siren call is price. Well you see you can get something like the PowerColor or the XFX 4GB variants of the RX 470 for around $160 new. These often come with additional deals like $20 rebates or a free game like they did a few days ago with Hitman. Games you can sell and thus lower your investment. If that's not enough, cards like these go used for around $120 to $130 with lucky buyers and unlucky sellers of course as snatching great cards for as low as $100 which is just just stupid good. Yeah, more than likely these are the 4GB VRAM options and since the frame buffer doesn't stack in Crossfire or SLI for that matter, with the notable exception of some DX12 MGPU implementations, keep this in mind when snatching a cheap RX 470. So the goal in my mind is to combine your $230 existing RX 480 with a cheap RX 470, costing something like $130 let's say, and see how close we can get to a $370 standalone GTX 1070. We will talk at the end of the benchmarks about PSU requirements and power draw, so stay tuned for that. I reviewed this MSI Gaming X RX 470 last year and pretty much established that overclocked to 1350MHz core clock and 7700MHz effective VRAM clock, you're essentially getting stock RX 480 performance. So I overclocked this to match it to the bigger brother and I kept the bigger brother at stock 1266MHz and just bumped the VRAM clock to 8500MHz instead of 8000 MHz standard. On the other hand, the G1 Gaming GDX 1070 from Gigabyte will boost under low to 2.0 GHz core clock, so essentially this is overclocked as well. VRAM clocks are left at stock as there's plenty of bandwidth for the 1070 according to my testing. I slapped all of these on my 7700K overclock to 5.1 GHz and paired with 3600 MHz DDR4 and chose 10 titles I have that tend to scale with Crossfire even for a tiny bit, or not at all in some cases, and were ready to see what you can expect in terms of performance. I only tested in 2560 by 1440, that's 1440p, for reasons obvious to anyone wanting a dual GPU setup to power a higher than 1080p res. As usual, you have the 5% low frames, which I'm not going to explain what they do for a zillionth time, as well as frame time graphs of the Crossfire setup and the GDX 1070 to have an in-depth idea of what's behind the curtain. Now I'm going to be upfront here and not sugarcoat things. Crossfire as well as SLI in equal measure have their issues. Frame pacing, stutter, micro stutter, maybe some crashes, etc. I'm not going to debate why anyone would choose a multi GPU setup in favor of a single more powerful GPU since this remains a real option that anyone can choose. Hence I will be including a grade in the top right corner of how the Crossfire experience was for me. This will take into account scaling, stutter and micro stutter, texture flickering and game crashes. Also keep in mind that there's an equal amount of titles that scale well to those that have zero scaling or even negative scaling for that matter. It's just something that you need to be prepared for if you're going Crossfire or SLI. We have games and engines that scale really good and essentially offer double the performance and titles that don't really care that you have a second GPU in there. DX12 is poised to make MGPU setups work really well and from what I'm seeing in Rise of the Tomb Raider and Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which run on the same engine, it does achieve this. I should also commend these two games for almost linearly scaling in Crossfire, for having zero stutter or micro stutter and for running without hitches. I want to point out that frame time analysis for Tomb Raider might not be accurate due to the way that DX12 AFR alternate frame rendering works in this game. The graph would suggest massive micro stutter but the game was really smooth, although running on the same engine Deus Ex doesn't exhibit this so kind of strange here. 
You know, it's kind of sad to see an older engine like CryEngine 3 do so well with multi-GPU setups, scale to more than 4 CPU cores and have in comparison 2016 engines that are limited to 4 CPU cores and don't give a damn about my extra GPU in there. This is why I keep using Crysis 3 for benching cause it's that damn good and was so ahead of its time. I also threw in Metro Last Light in here, since this is a good example of an even older engine that does well with multi-GPU setups. In contrast, you have Mafia 3 that is so unimpressed by my crossfire that I might as well just disable the second card and remove it entirely from my PC. I'll leave you with more tests and make sure to stick around for the benchmark send as we're taking a look at power draw and wrapping things up. Right, so I also measured total system power draw at the wall and that's not taking into account my Superflowers PSU efficiency which is a measured, not by me, 84% at over 400 watts draw. I won't complicate things, so this graph takes into account that rated 84% efficiency. Testing has been done in the rise of the Tomb Raider Geothermal Valley simply because it shows excellent crossfire scaling and also pushes the CPU in this particular area. So we're looking at a measured average of 492 watts for the Crossfire setup and 386 watts for the GTX 1070 system. Keep in mind I have 4 SSDs, 2 hard drives, the NZXT Hue Plus RGB kit, 4 140mm fans and 2 150mm fans as well. Not anyone will have this many stuff draining their PSU. I guess it's safe to say that a good 550 to 650 watt quality PSU is A-OK. -okay. My super flower is 550 watts and the fan on it wasn't spinning in the first 10 to 15 minutes of gaming, so yeah. Anyway, good PSUs are a must for a system, so don't cheap out here and make sure you have some room to spare when you get yours, especially if you're the type to upgrade often and does crazy things. Would I recommend doing what I did? Well, I wouldn't recommend it to recommend it, but I wouldn't scare anyone that's thinking of doing it either. To be honest, my experience was pretty hit or miss. And this is mostly due to stutter, micro stutter and flashing textures. Granted, this crossfire option is not officially supported by AMD, but I bet it's going to be similar with another RX 480 in there instead of D470. Games that worked well were a treat to play, but others made the gaming experience really bad with frequent stutter. GTA 5 is an example of this, it mostly works well, but has great scaling, but in some parts of the city there's this stutter, like going through a barrier of molasses for a split second and then back to normal again. In Witcher 3 there's the same thing as well. BF1 was ok, but scaling was poor, Tomb Raider and Deus Ex were downright excellent, as well as Crisis and Metro Last Light. Far Cry Primal was not bad at all too, but we have Mafia 3 that disappoints gravely, and there's other titles that behave the same, which I didn't even bother including since they tend to be titles that have issues even on single GPU setups. Yeah, well I hope this video was informative enough to earn a like from you guys and also to get you consider sharing it to help others. If there's anything I missed you have the comment section down below and as usual thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing and see you next time everybody bye bye.